Now for something completely different. At the outset of this course, we started talking about the geometric transformations that come from applying matrices. So for example, rotations and reflections and things. So these geometric transformations have a name, which I haven't used until now, um, which I probably should have done. They're called linear maps. So um, in this video, we're going to talk about several different ways of thinking about linear maps. And the easiest way to define what a linear map is for us is to say a linear map or a map Rn to Rm is linear um, if there exists a matrix, so an M by N matrix A such that f of v equals a v for all v. Okay, so that's how you should think about linear maps. They're just the maps you get by applying matrices. However, some linear maps arise naturally in situations where you don't see any matrices. So here's an example. Consider the space of polynomials of degree at most n. For some fixed number n. So there's a map from this space back to itself, which is differentiation. If you differentiate a polynomial of degree at most n, you get another polynomial of degree at most n. And this is a linear map. But to see why it's linear, we need to understand why, uh, how to un how to imagine a polynomial as a vector. So to a polynomial p, it's going to be a n x to the n plus dot 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 plus a one x plus a zero. We're going to associate its vector of coefficients a zero, a one, up to a n. Now, in terms of this vector we can see this map d by dx is given by a matrix. So what's dp by dx? It's a uh, n a n x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 a 2 x plus a 1. So that corresponds to the vector a 1 2 a 2 dot 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 n a n 0. Right, the, the x to the n coefficient is now 0. So to get from this vector to this one, we have to apply the following matrix. I'll just tell you what it is. Or if you like, you can pause the video and think about it. Check. So 0, 1, 0, dot, 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 0 on the first row. 0, 0, 2, 0, dot, 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 0. 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, dot, 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 0. And then what you're doing is on this diagonal, it's not quite the diagonal, it's just one above the diagonal. You're doing 1, 2, 3, up to n. Everywhere else is 0. And then the final row is 0. Okay, so if we call this matrix uh, D or something, then and, and we call this um, vector VP, then what I'm saying is D applied to VP is V DP by DX. So this is saying differentiation can be thought of as a linear map. But this way of encoding polynomials as vectors is kind of a bit artificial. You know, why didn't I, for example, encode my vector by writing a n first, then a n minus one, all the way down to a zero? Right, I've made a choice here about how to identify uh, identify polynomials with vectors. Um, and the fact that this map is linear somehow is an intrinsic fact about differentiation. 
So here's an alternative definition of what it means to be a linear map, which we'll see is equivalent to the first. So a map is linear if uh, f, so this map is called f, f of v plus w equals f of v plus f of w and f of lambda v equals lambda f of v. So this first one is for all v and w and the second one is for all v and all lambda in R. So I haven't told you where v and w live. That's intentionally ambiguous because they could live in this space of polynomials. We know how to add polynomials so we know how to make sense of v plus w and we know how to rescale polynomials. So basically this makes sense whenever we have these operations of addition and rescaling. So in a later uh, video we're going to see the general setting of this is the setting of vector spaces. But you can imagine that these guys live in Rn. So polynomial uh, differentiation of polynomials is linear. So d by dx of p plus q is dp by dx plus dq by dx and d by dx of constant times p is constant times dp by dx. So this is saying the function d by dx is linear. Here's another example of a linear map. Take um, the function f from r to r which converts distances in meters to distances in feet. So one foot is about 3.281 meters. No, <laughs> one meter is about 3.218 feet. Um, so this map F is really just multiplication by 3.281. In other words, if you double x, you double the number of meters, then you're doubling the number of feet. If you take two distances, stick them end to end, then it doesn't matter whether you measure them in feet or in meters, the total distance is, is the same. As in, what do I mean? I mean, if this is uh, x meters, this is y meters, then the total is x plus y meters. But this is also f of x feet and f of y feet and the total distance is f of x plus y feet. So we have the nice behavior under addition. So in other words you can you can you can measure it in meters, you can measure it in feet, you can convert before or after you add the two things and it, you get the same answer. So this is linear. Here's something that's not linear. Consider the function f from r to r, which converts temperatures in Celsius to temperatures in Kelvin. So if you remember, a change of one degree Celsius is the same as a change of one degree Kelvin, but zero degrees Kelvin is like minus 273 degrees Celsius. So F of 0 is 273 point something. I'm, this is all approximate. Now this means it's not linear. Why? Well, let's look at the axioms. F of lambda x is supposed to be lambda F of x for all lambda. So if I take lambda equals 0, I'm going to get f of 0 equals 0. So if f of 0 is 273, which is definitely not linear. So this is worth remembering that a linear map sends the origin to the origin. Another nice example. So, so university exams are kind of messed up this year, right? with everybody but like some universities have very strange ways of marking exams even 
in usual times. So I'm told the way they used to mark exams in Oxford, I don't know if this is still the way they do it, was they'd take all the uh, individual questions, let's say, X, let's say the two questions and you get marks X and Y, and instead of just adding them up, they'd square them and add them up. So let's say this is f of x, y. This is not linear, right? So this is not the same as x plus y squared. This would give you x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. The point of this was somehow to um, give extra credit to people who did very well. So if you have a large x and you square it, it gets much, much bigger than if you just had a small x and you square it. Um, so this is somehow a way of rewarding people who got lots of marks. Or rather, lots of marks on a few questions, rather than uh, lots of marks spread across lots of questions. So this is not linear. In fact, most uh, exam systems, there's some amount of non-linearity somewhere along the way. Unfortunately, it's still the case that f of 0 is 0, right? So if you score no marks, you still get no marks. OK, it's high time that we showed these two definitions of linearity, here and here, are equivalent. It's not good to have two inequivalent definitions with the same name. So let's see. So f is linear in the sense that f of v plus w equals f of v plus f of w and f of lambda v equals lambda f of v if and only if there exists a matrix A such that f of v equals a v. So how does this work? Well, one direction is easy. If you have a matrix such that f of v is a of v, then you can check that these axioms hold. Uh, a v plus w is just a times v plus a times w and a of lambda v is just lambda a of v so f is linear in this first sense the converse um, how do we prove that well consider the basis vectors e1 which is 1 0 0 0 0 e2 which is 0 1 0 0 0 0 all the way up to en which is 0 dot 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 0 1 and let a be the matrix whose columns are f e1 f e2 up to f e n okay each of these uh, f e1 f e2 they're, they're all vectors so you just stick those vectors next to each other you get a, a matrix then let's compute f of v well, what is v? v is some vector v1 up to vn which we can write as v1 times e1 plus v2 times e2 plus dot 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 plus vn times en and now using the two properties of linearity you know those that we can distribute it over addition and we can pull out constants we just rearrange this as uh, sorry as um, v1 f e1 plus v2 f e2 
plus dot 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 plus vn fen. Now, fe1 is the first column of a, so that is ae1. Remember, ae1 is the first column of a. fe2 is the second column of a, so this is v2 ae2. And then we end up with vn aen. Finally, we can pull this a out of each of these terms and we just get uh, a v1 e1 plus dot 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 plus vn en and that's a v. So f of v is a v for some matrix and which matrix? Well, it's, it's this one, the one whose columns are f e1 up to f en. Okay, so we have these two notions of linearity and they agree. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about sort of exploring this notion of linearity in, in this generality.